Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Great. My name is Pekka. Tonight we are family, and Royal Albert Hall is our home, our, uh, our village even. Philip Venables, who I'm proud to call my friend, has created a concerto for us that tells the remarkable uh, life story of Philip's violin teacher's violin teacher, a Hungarian gentleman called Rudolf Botta. The concerto, the concerto also tells the story of its own birth and the story of Philip's connection to Rudolf Botta. These stories from different times unfold through pre-recorded voices. Philip also, um, he also includes folk music based works by the great Hungarian composer Béla Bartók in this concerto. It's not only um, it's not only a way of connecting tonight's premiere with the home country of Rudolf Botta, but this repertoire, for instance, the Romanian folk dances, they form an incredibly important element in the lives of many young musicians who want to tell stories through music to their, to their families and, and their villages. Now, you might be thinking, this sounds somewhat confusing. <laughs> but uh, worry not. Whenever we burst into a Bartok tune, I will announce it to you. <laughs> and when we venture back into Philip's music, I think you will notice. <laughs> now, this concerto is dedicated by Philip to his violin teacher, Marilyn Chern, who is somewhere in this wonderful room tonight. And if I may, I would also like to dedicate the performance to uh, family members of Rudolf Botta, many of whom are also with us here tonight. We are going to begin with Evening in the Village from Bela Bartok's Hungarian Miniatures. In case you're wondering, Evening in the Village also appeared in the collection Ten Easy Pieces for Piano. Mum found an old videotape labelled Philip. Masterclass with Rudolf Botter, November 1993. On the tape, I'm playing a piece that must have been for grade six, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. I make a rough transcription of the melody from the videotape and post it on Twitter. Stuart McRae and Adam Swain both tweet back. Apparently it's Bartok, Evening in the Village. I download the sheet music and try to play it. I haven't played my violin for at least a year. My intonation is awful, and my left hand is stiff and quickly gets tired. And now, moving straight on to the Romanian polka. I just had lunch with Pekka on an 
island in Helsinki that was used to demagnetize ships during the war. Completely out of the blue, we discussed David Oistbach's vibrato. Followed by the fast dance. Saturday, 3rd of June, 1944. Bonihan occupied Hungary. We receive orders to throw a party for the German officers stationed here. They know they have lost the war, but they don't dare say it. They just drink instead. A gypsy band plays the usual Hungarian stuff. A few Viennese waltzes they know. But the style is simple. I pick up a violin and go to the cell to warm up my fingers. For years I have hardly touched a violin, and my hand is stiff. I tell the band a key, and they improvise an accompaniment. I'm still sober enough to tell them not to try any gypsy tricks while I play. But to stick to strict harmony. The Germans are astonished. They sing and drown out my violin. The night's music from the collection of piano pieces out of doors. Rudolf's granddaughter, Francesca, lets me hold the tiny violin that Rudolf had carved in the Soviet prison camp. It's so small, beautifully made, but she doesn't want to string it properly in case the tension breaks it. Having said that, I do remember my teacher, Marilyn, saying she had played it years ago. Twenty sixth of January, nineteen forty six. Griffin, Austria.
the snow is slowly melting. In the new year, the British announce that our service as police deputies is over. They collect our uniforms back in and stop giving us food. I've eaten mainly potatoes for the last three days and haven't had meat in two weeks. By chance, I found a temporary job as a violin teacher in Klagenfurt. The school is desperate. Most of their music staff have been killed. It's only one day a week, but it means finally I get ration cards. They lend me a violin, and I start to play again. After six years, The stick dance from the Romanian folk dances. Genevieve told me about her mother, Leonka, and how Rudolf used to swim the Danube every Sunday to see Leonka in Verdpusta when they were dating. There's a passage in his memoirs about how to swim against a strong river current. Apparently, Rudolf would strap his clothes and shoes to his head to swim across. Tuesday, 30th of October, 1956. Bonihad, Hungary. The unrest began seven days ago. 
On Wednesday, students started burning Russian books in the streets. The enamel factory and the mines stopped work last week. And the shoe factory shut down yesterday. There were 4,000 people in the town square on Saturday night, and gunfire since then. <laughs> was shot. He was only 16. There was a national council meeting last night, and this morning they appointed me district commander of our regional national guard. Almost all the men in the town joined up. Hungary is fighting back. The chase! I'm on the train to Preston after meeting Rudolf's granddaughter, Francesca. She had some newspaper clippings from 1957 with pictures of Rudolf, Leonka and their two girls. Britain took 22,000 Hungarian refugees that year. I also saw some photos of Rudolf fencing in his teens. Quite a dashing guy. Thursday the 6th of December, 1956. A refugee camp in Vienna. We fled Hungary. We had no choice. told me that he had heard that I would, that I would be arrested soon. We knew what that really meant, especially for my girls and Leonka. Siberia. Thirty-seven of us left Bonnie Hart in a miner's bus. I gave them instruments from the music school to pretend we were playing at a family wedding. This lie worked on the patrols, especially once we handed over our values. But the patrol split us up. And we have not seen the others since. I fear the worst. My poor girls had to trudge through snow and mud all night to the border. The sound of gunfire never stopped, but we made it. Coaches are coming from Manchester to take. They call them happiness coaches. This is the dance from Buchum. I met David Fielding today, Rudolf's son-in-law. He told me that Rudolf used to go most Thursdays to see the Halle. If it was a violin concerto, he would take along a copy of the part and write in the soloist's fingerings and bowings. Rudolf had all of these different parts catalogued and numbered at home. He loved David Oistrach. 
mainly because he could vary his vibrato so much. Twenty-fourth of February, nineteen fifty-seven, Burnley, England. I got a letter this morning in Hungarian, would you believe, from the Royal Manchester College of Music. They saw me playing on the TV, a documentary about refugees in Britain. And they said if I learn English quickly, they'll give me a job. Apparently, it's enough that I'm a Hungarian violinist. The local newspaper has photographed us and made up their own British names for the girls. The caption says, "Only a few weeks ago." The nine-year-old girl in this picture was called Emke by her friends. Now she is Maureen. Maureen is an infant prodigy on the piano. But until they can afford to get a piano at their new home, she will have to practice her music on her father's 250-year-old Italian violin, one of the few articles they could bring out of Hungary. The next one is the bear dance. I found this article called "Bullfighting as an Art Form" by one of Rudolf's ex-students, Paul Hurt. It's not really that relevant to this piece, but I love it. The technique of bullfighting. The 29th of April, 1952. An unknown location in southwest Hungary. The secret police arrests me. They want information about co. But I refuse. They want me to inform. But I refuse. Such as the action of the wrists. They point a gun at my head, but still, I refuse. I refuse. I will not do it. It's surely not merely a subtle. They want information. Intricate, but I refuse. And complex. So they torture. Have the technique of a developed skill. They take a hammer. Such as violin. They strike. Left hand again, 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 and again, which makes extraordinary demands. They take a hammer. They strike my hand. The hammer breaks my wrist. 
of neuromuscular coordination. My hand is pipe. Not just at the fingers. They strike. And hand. Again. But the shoulder. Again. Arm. Again. Elbow. Again. And I cannot. I cannot. I cannot feel my hand. My own studies with the Hungarian violinist Rudolf Potter have left an indelible impression. I do not give in. So they send me to a prison camp. In the camp, I stay alive only for my daughters and Leonka. I carve a small violin out of wood. But I'm careful to hide it from the guards. My hand is destroyed. I am released the following year. But I never play. Again. I take the train to Prague today to have lunch with my old teacher, Marilyn. We haven't seen each other for 19 years. She told me stories about her studies with Rudolf and said that he made a huge impact on her life. The kind of person you meet once in a lifetime, she said. I'm glad I'm writing this concerto about him, but I didn't tell Marilyn that I am going to dedicate it to her. After lunch, we watched the video of me playing Evening in the Village to Rudolph when I was 14. There's no need to do it. anything here with him, it's, we played it very nicely. Now, what fingering do we use here in this? No, play it in fourth position. Fourth finger, third, first, third. It's much better. Yes, you see? Now it's funny, because you have got used to the little sharpish approach, yes. Well, that is just what my, my advice, I would because it's strain on hand when you play this in fifth position. All right, I only want to help now. Otherwise, you have to risk that you will be sharp on the... unless you learn that stretch properly back. Right. Now, something you have to do with this thing. Because you play it very well, and it's slightly out of tune. And once you, you've lost your first finger, correct place here, the rest is dangerous. It's not quite... It's one almost accepts it, but it's one. 17th of August, 1938. Bonja, Hungary.
I strained my left hand slightly in fencing practice this morning. A bit silly of me since I have another performance of the Vivaldi B minor tonight. I'm sure it will be fine. I've got five concerts this week and our quartet tour starts next week. And on top of that, I still have so much preparation to do before our move to Budapest. Still, I'm feeling good about my play at the moment. We finished the Vivaldi rehearsal last night and I had one of those moments where you feel like everything is falling into place. Life is good. We've reached the last tune. This is uh, Standing Still from the Romanian folk dances. Hi Hannah, thanks for your email. I have a title for the concerto for you now. Venables plays Bartok with a double credit, Venables, Bartok. The piece is about my violin teacher's teacher, Rudolf Botter, who was a refugee who fled Hungary to the UK during the revolution. I met him when I was a teenager and played one of the Hungarian sketches for him so I'm going to use those as a frame for the piece. I want to tell his life story, alongside my story of learning the violin and researching this concerto. Kind of like a violin life stories piece. I also discussed with Anne and Paul the tech stuff for the recorded voiceover. I think it should be quite straightforward. By the way, I had a lovely day with Becker in Berlin last week. It turns out his first teacher in Helsinki was also a Hungarian emigrant. A strange coincidence. I feel like we are all connected, in one big violin family. All very best, Philip. <laughs> 